During the summer of 2023, we moved to a remote Scottish Hebridean island to be its only two residents along with our two pet sheep and pair of cats. These remote islands seem to retain an old-fashioned rhythm and a charm which we find encouraging us to live a more frugal and simple life, the way man was perhaps more intended to. We have an ancient stone cottage to restore, veggies to grow, livestock to build up, fish to catch and smoke, a boat to buy, and much more. Step back in time with us at the Scottish Isle. Vas is das. Longer than I thought it would be. Yeah. Answers on a postcard. Well, I know what it is, but I, did, I didn't when it arrived. Didn't understand why it was as long as it was. What do you think the, the postage was on that? So, these will be cut in half. These are for the, cor these are the corner brackets for holding the render onto the... <laughs> Sorry, I can't get to the top of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just kept going up and up. Um, yeah, these bed the render right into the chimneys. He, I couldn't get them in stainless steel for any reasonable price, um, which is what you need. You can't, you can't, if we used galvanised steel, which is what they tend to all come in, uh, on this coastal property, they would just start to rust and obviously it would spoil the look of the chimneys. We'd be painting them all the time. So these are UPVC and... Um, they do just as good a job. So these will be cut in half and attached to each corner. Well, now we just need a couple of days of good weather. We'll do this chimney first. We need some sort of foam pad, don't we, for sitting on the apex of the roof, especially a, a gentleman like yourself, because that's not going to be very comfortable. No, well, I'm definitely getting some padding before I go up there, sitting on that. And... I'm not one for suffering for my art. Suffering for your art, did you yeah. say? Okay. So oh, here we go. That was quite funny, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the ladder is upside down. Scott realised that while I was putting the brackets on, but didn't tell me so. Um, we've also had a couple of good tips from people about working on roofs, um, about footwear and how you place the ladder and things like that. So thanks very much for all that because obviously this is completely new to all of, to us. So it's good to have you all on board and giving us your advice. Well, here, take this. Got my hands full. Just drop it. It's only a bit of plastic, isn't it? When I got the smaller ladders, as in the, the wooden ones, we had a difference of opinion about how we were going to do this. This was Katie's idea all along to do this and it wasn't mine. I didn't think about the full length of the ladders. I was only going to use these to hook to the top and the wooden ladders were going to be up here. So the idea was to climb up those, then climb onto this on the roof and that's what I had in my head. It was only when we was putting the hooks on that we thought, well, actually, this might work this way. However, we're going to go back to the original plan, which is, you know, I said in the last episode that I couldn't get my feet in the runners on, I'm up on the roof, which is true. Well, that's not going to be a problem when they're doubled up like this. Could you just, just zoom in? So when they're doubled up like this, there's no issue. I can get my feet in there, no problem. So this is going to get flipped round the right way, closed up. Those... Hooks are going to be put on this end, back on the roof, uh, and then I'll climb up with this one and then onto that. This is going to be obviously hanging about to here though. Would you um, like to explain to everybody what you were telling our patrons this morning about the work in the living room being frustratingly slow and what we're, we're just remind everybody what our plans are? The reason why you're not seeing any work go on in in what is the living room right now uh, is because we, we, we're fed up with the constant issues with the tidying. 
uh, the dust, etc., that is created, it's just now got to the point where we can't handle it anymore, or we can't we can't do anything about it. It creates that much dust. So as soon as Shona is out of the kitchen, which is going to be in the next week or so, we're sealing off this room completely. We're taking everything out of it. We're going to move all our furniture into the kitchen extension, and we're going to live there for a month or so which then gives us the opportunity to lock this room down completely with plastic sheeting over the doors and we can just really get on with it. I'm so looking forward to it. You're not going to see that much going on inside the house for another couple of weeks, but after that, it's going to be non-stop because we're both sick and tired of how slow this, is, uh, this has been. But it's only because of this process. We, we have to get Shona uh, big enough and weaned and everything else before we can kick her out permanently. And so, that, that is in process over here. At the minute, we're acclimatising Shona to being in the stable. <laughs> so they're all locked in here together. Hello, little sheep. Little Shona nose. Good girls. They're perfectly content in there. Actually, that, that brings me to talking about what I was thinking about, about the sheep pen. What about the sheep pen? Well, come, come with me. What? Come with me. Ow. When we got here, this was a, a dog kennel. Behind these, these wooden boards were in the house. They were over the plaster board, which we took down. Um, so they needed, the sheep needed a nice shelter. So we just put these up. They're temporary. They're, they're not, you know, we never planned for them to be permanent. But yeah, these were dog kennels that were here before. Um, we were, we've been talked, we've talked before about maybe facing this with stone, about rebuilding it with stone. Um, but I came up with a potential other plan that I wanted to talk to you about. Well, this is new to me. Yeah, I know. Round this side of the house. You've said before that you're concerned about the shelter that that actually affords them with the wind coming in through uh -huh. that front facing door. So. Don't you, tell me you're thinking about moving the sheep. And you've also. If said, you're thinking about moving the sheep, you know what? We, we tried that with Ree. You've, you've also said that. Um, She's thinking about moving the sheep. You're interested in building something in stone. Well, we'll get rid of that. This half wall, whatever was here, I'm not sure. We could build a. A small, like a, a short structure, not like the whole height of the house. But this is, if we built a stone wall coming out here and round like that, and maybe a little bit that way, and had a doorway here, we could build a, a sheep pen and just do a sort of, we could even do a th little thatched roof, just like a lean-to on the side of the house out of stone. And it would be sheltered from the winds that come from that side and because it, the door would be facing that way it would be really sheltered for them in the winter from what the do winds we do with the gas pot put it so somewhere else so you haven't else? thought it through that's where the gas bottle lives <laughs> the gas bottle could be moved just a few feet that way oh, why do we have to change everything all the time <laughs> what do you i mean the, oh, this needs attention anyway i haven't actually looked at well, this before can i just say this yeah i in principle, I, have, I think that's a good idea, but you know what happens when you move the sheep. What we'd have to do is build it and have it ready to go. The other good thing about having them in here is that there's a concrete slab in there, which means that we have to keep cleaning them out. Whereas if, if we were to put them onto earth, then you can essentially just keep piling the fresh wood shavings on top and they, they compost down into the earth and... You, don't, you would only have to clean them out maybe once a year then. Um, well, and it also, if it's, self, if it's composting itself, it generates heat for them during the winter. But yeah. I'll tell you what, I, you get all the stone together, yeah? And let me know when you've got it all here. And then I'll come along and I'll... Do you not think that's a, that, that's a sensible idea? Yeah, I think it's a very sensible idea that you go and collect all the stone with your wheelbarrow I kind of wish I hadn't looked behind there. What's going on behind there? 
Well, you, you can see the old... What is it, the old corrugated iron? Yeah. I think that the corrugated iron was supposed to be, from what the owner said, the corrugated iron was supposed to be taken off before this was put on. But it isn't. It, so I'm thinking that the corrugated iron goes all the way along and this has just been put over the top of it. It won't go all the way along the front, the front portion. It wasn't portion. that long, was it? Until it, it turns, it'll... Yeah. Um, but this is also an issue because because the corrugated iron's not been taken off. <laughs> that's um, not an issue. This, that's an abomination. There's no... Like, uh, yeah, like, look what happens when it rains. I don't know what the solution is to that exactly. Extend it somehow, I guess. Because you're not going to get a gutter in there, are you? Oh, look, I, I, I can only focus on a few things at a time. And <laughs> at this moment in time, you know, you've already thrown like three different, four different things at me. Surprise! It's like, yeah, I'm, this roof thing is just last on the list. Well, that, it, you know, there are some stones here already. So you can just crack on with that, yeah? Get started. No, you get the stones. Your you were, idea, thought, I'll help you build it. <laughs> I thought you wanted to build something in stone. Yeah, I do. But do you know what I don't want to do? Collect all the stones. <laughs> so you collect the stones. Well, there's lots of stones just out there. Where? On the foreshore. <laughs> That's our first seal, isn't it? Over here. Yep. Digital zoom. Can you see him? <laughs> That's not him. <laughs> Come closer. Great I'll, silky. Um, I'll walk down there. I don't want him to, you know, he, he will He will clear off though, the closer that I get. But it, there's, there's no way I can sneak up on him, is there? Let me, let me get in the binoculars. It's quite far away, so that's why the uh, the zoom is is as you know bad as it is. <laughs> it's it's just sod's law about the boy. I I can't get around the boy.
don't know if you can hear, it's an incredibly rainy day out there. So I thought I'd look through my grandmother's cookbook and I'm going to make some soup, a traditional Scottish soup. It's from a place called Cullen in Morayshire. Uh, Cullen skink was, well a skink is a shin bone. It was traditionally made from beef shin, I think, maybe lamb too. But as times changed and availability of produce also changed for people, the recipe changed and they started using smoked fish instead, which is something in abundance uh, in, in Scotland. Um, potatoes and onions predominantly, that's it. You need to have smoked white fish. So cod, haddock, bassa, place, whatever you can get your hands on. If you can't readily buy it where you are smoked, please do, do it yourself. It's really easy. Um, you could check out episode five where I show you um, what I used from just stuff that I had, ha you know, hanging around the house to, to smoke my own fish and it's delicious. You can just f do it in an old tin box and buy in some wood chips. It's super, super easy. But it must be smoked because that's what gives you the flavour in this soup. And what you do is um, you peel and chop your tatties and your onion, you fry your onion and top your onion off with your diced potatoes, boil them in just enough water to cover them and then once they're tender you mash half of the potato and that's what helps thicken the soup. In a separate pan you just cover your fish with some milk and you very gently poach it and you, you want it, the longer it's sitting in the milk the better the flavour, that smokiness really gets into the milk. And once it's done, you flake it all up and you add both together, add some chopped parsley. It's kind of like a chowder, but without the, the, you know, all the extra ingredients that you would find in a chowder. And it's very light and warming soup for this sort of day.
What do you want me to do? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to take it down. Watch your hand. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected it was going to be. I thought it was going to be... Is that as far as it's going? No, it should be further. I'm going to pull it down and figure it out. Right. So, they need to come off, right, and go the other way around? Yeah, but I'm not doing that now. OK, we'll just put them over here. Uh, yeah, they're doing well. Well, that'll live there for the next six months until we get around <laughs> to changing the brackets. Joe, two things. That I have no joy. You know when you, you need things and you buy them online? Two things that I have no joy in buying. In fact, every single time I've bought them online, I've had to send them back. Probably five or six times now. Brushes, yeah? You cannot buy a decent yard brush online for love and money. Just cannot find one. And lighters. Do you know the last batch of lighters I tried? Refillable, just refillable, disposable lighters. The last batch that I, I bought, I had to, well, they never even turned up. They just didn't send them out. <laughs> so the postcode and thought, nah, nobody lives there, surely. Like five or six times I've tried to buy lighters and every single time they've turned up, they've been nothing but just trash. Why is it so difficult now to buy just a decent lighter? It's qu quite difficult to buy anything decent. Well, it, so it is pr pretty much everything. It's not just me. Right, I'm going to work on this, start digging this out. Have you found any artefacts yet? I've only just started. Oh, I'll move on. This is where we come across Merlin's tomb. <laughs> is that why the house is haunted? What well, somebody asked us that, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I don't know. I don't really believe in ghosts. I like the idea. I uh, used to love watching Most Haunted back in the day with Derek. Yeah, well. I think well, that's anything, just for entertainment value, really. Anything lingers, it's... Uh, it's a living you need to be afraid of. Anything that lingers shouldn't be here, that's what I think. Can I ask you a question? To be absent from the body is to be present with God, right? Can I ask you a question? Um, animal, vegetable or mineral? Is this not easy? No. From when you did it. I like the way I did it better. Yeah. Oh, somebody bought us knee pads. Leslie. Be, is it Leslie? It's going to be a joy using these knee pads.
really gone with all that mud. Oh, it's not staying here, is it? Yeah. Why is it staying here? It's all gone back in. What do you mean it's going back in? It's backfilled. I thought the whole point was exposing the wall. Yeah, and then you put a damp proof membrane across it and you put all the mud back. Well, yeah, but we're not going to be putting all the mud back. This is going on eBay. <laughs> Let's put it in the Scottish Isle merch store. Yeah. It's good Scottish dirt, that. We're not allowed a merch store, are we, until we get to, what is it, 100,000? Technically what we're doing here is overkill because the floor level inside is about here, right? And that's a, a, what, a foot lower, a foot and a half in some places lower. So it's yeah, definitely... Yeah, down, down here we're definitely a foot lower. It's, it's definitely going to make a big difference. Not that there's... Well, we don't know what's underneath the floor in the bedroom yet, but there's not that many damp problems anymore in this house since you cleared the trench out at the back, but... It's just future proofing it, isn't it? Well, some people have still said having any dirt whatsoever, even this, with your flower beds next to the wall, is going to create damp. But with a membrane, I mean, there's only so much you can do with this. It's, it's, it's sitting right on bedrock. You're damp proof membraning, membraning it. You're taking away all the concrete. It's, it's not going to be any different than having stones next to the house versus dirt next to the house with a membrane there. Do you see where all the membrane's showing here? Yeah. I want that all covered up. Yeah, so yeah. So we're going to lime crete over that? No, we'll just it's, it's just the dirt moving, like these, these guys yeah, but digging how, it up. Yeah, but look how high, if you look over there, how high it is. I want all that disappearing. I don't want to see any of that. Yeah. We're so just, you're not going to get mud on there because it's not going to compact. The rain's just going to, like... So we'd be putting lime render over the top of it. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe some more stones, big stones. As long as it's, I can't see it, because yeah. I, I, you know, it just looks terrible as it, it, it is. But it is, it's, it's mainly air yeah, jumping it, all over the, the uh, wildflowers. It's, it's because um, it's because it's sitting right on bedrock. But yeah, it's a lot a lot deeper here. But this is uh, it's going to do it the world a good to to air out and then get the membrane on it. I'm, I'm grateful for your strumming help, but getting two strummers set up is a pain in the backside. Are you complaining? It's, it, 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 on rare occasion, mark it on the calendar. Well, I, I've, I'm sorry, but you, you know, I'm going to have to contact the union about this because <laughs> where this channel's concerned, I'm the complainer, I'm the moaner. The Scottish Isle Union? Yeah. Similar to the Scottish Isle radio station that you, idea that you came up with, with one listener. Yeah, me. <laughs> um, yeah, I think another reason the Hyundai is slightly better than the steel in this case is that the guard on the Hyundai has a blade so that as, as you spin, it cuts the line to the right length. Well, maybe you should explain to people that we have two strimmers. Yeah. So there's the still, which is there, which we've always had, and now we've got this new one that was gifted to us by Leslie. Yeah, I mean, the, this one, the, the Hyundai is for um, down at the cottage, but you're just helping me with the, yeah. with the heavy work up here at the minute in the cultivated part of the garden. Well, we're going, right. going, we're going to go and do the orchard. Strim the orchard. The only problem with that is the weather has just really gone bad again. So the wind and the rain is up ridiculously. And that's no problem to work in, but it's a problem to filming because obviously we've got all this expensive gear now and we can't get wet. 
Well, this, is, this is one of the problems we've got, you know, here, that we never thought about, did we? About the humidity levels, especially during the summer periods when it comes to filming. Yeah, well, we're going to need an umbrella, something to put over the, over the camera. Remember, don't cross the beans. <laughs> okay? Okay. You got that? Yeah. You know what happens if you cross the beams? Something bad? Yes. Have you seen Ghostbusters? Of course I've seen it. Well, and you know then, don't you? Uh, we've been waiting for the rain to stop. It's now finally stopped. So we're going to have to walk all the way down to the orchard with these. This is going to be fun, isn't it? I'm streaming in the rain. Just it works, doesn't it? In the rain. That works. You should do it. Put it on Spotify. I don't have the tap dancing shoes. Scottish but... Isle, uh, top 100. Katie sings <laughs> songs from the shows with a twist. There is no way that we're going to get this done because of the rain. Get a patch or two done. Make a dent in it. I don't think it's going to work. Call, call me a pessimist. You're a pessimist. Okay. Are there any other songs from the shows that we can change into gardening? You don't like musicals, do you? I, I love a good musical, I do. Hang on a minute. Where do you get I don't like musicals from? Who's the one that bought you Mary Poppins, My Fair Lady, Sound of Music? Okay, yeah, fair enough. You don't like uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber Oh, stuff. God, no. No. I, I like, I like... The four that I've just three I've just said, I like Oliver. Uh, I love Greece, and that's about it. I like Olivia Newton John singing Xanadu, but I don't like the film. Liam is. No, hate it. You you wouldn't come to see it with me. No, I don't like it. I hate it. I think it's just tedious. Fabulous, fabulous musical. Singing Russell Crowe. I don't think so. I'm not talking about the film. I've never seen the film. Some good performances in it. Yeah, it's Les Mis. I'm not interested. And the, the last that plays cassette, I always thought she sounded like a little bird singing. I don't know what An you're talking about. Voice. Might as well be talking double Dutch to me now. <sighs> you should read it then, Victor Hugo. You know what makes me laugh? Me. Me laugh. John people in the comments turn around and say, oh, you always seem to be the only one who has to do any work. Who likes this? I, I don't Is there somebody it. out there who enjoys this? You enjoy swimming, you weirdo. 
<laughs> and look at look at what you achieve. We've left all these little random patches of wild flowers. Um, cut down all the bracken, long grass, nettles, all the heads of the bluebells that were all here because they need to be reseeded. Looks good. Thanks for helping me. You enjoy doing this. <laughs> yeah. Do I enjoy doing it? Smoking your pipe. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Shall we go have some lunch now? Steak oh. pie yeah, and chips. Okay. Sounds like fun. <laughs>